What's up, man? Well, I think uh, everyone thought that might be an intense fight, and it certainly seemed it. Did you know going into this tonight that this was going to be a scrappy back for the fair, considering the emotions you've had this week? You know, I had a second round. I said this to the media uh, the other day. I said I had a second round sort of mission in my head. But once I felt his uh, power, I knew that we were just going to be too much for him. Um, and, and it showed in the fight. Um, I was very, very strong. My overhook was so tight that he was pretty much standing up with me and he couldn't shift me. Uh, once I lock in, it's uh, game over, isn't it? Is that why he decided to pull up? I'll be able to control it down here and he won't even see where I'm going. You know, ultimately, Brian's game plan, my coach, he decided that it was we were going to take it to him. We were going to be able to strike with him, which we showed we can do. We were using the front tips to gauge our distance, step in with that one-two. Unfortunately, I didn't get the one-two, but I did get the one. And then as he didn't move back, I took up that space. That's what Brian said was going to happen. He's not going to go back. And then you're going to clinch. We had this sort of half-tie clinch. Same again. The coach had spotted it. We drilled it. We were ready for it, and when I felt it, I was like, oh, this is quite nice. <laughs> this is genuinely nice. And uh, as I dragged them to the mat, uh, it was just a matter of time before firing up my legs. That's one of my, my strong attributes, and I've said in past media, it's my, my, brother's, my brother's cuss. You know, my brother used to beat me up as a kid. He was bigger than me then. He's not bigger than me now, and I had to defend with my legs, and that's ultimately how I, I learned how to... Jiu-Jitsu my way through life. <laughs> Brother bullying the best base for Jiu-Jitsu. Yep. Um, you said before this fight that his emotions were going to play against him. Do you think that happened tonight? Definitely. Um, that all meant something to him. Losing that zero, and it does to everybody. I was exactly the same when I joined this sport nearly four years ago. And it's 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 the great white buffalo. It's You want to keep it. You want to keep that all. You want to be something. You want to be the guy that's 9-0, and 10-0. and all. Work your way up their rankings. But in this sport, it's hard to keep, and tonight has all had to go. Talk the submission. Um, his arm's obviously broken. Uh, was he trying to tap? Because from our from our angle at ringside, it looked like he was trying to tap your leg and just kind of couldn't find the angle to actually make the connection, and the referee didn't step in at that point. Do you think he was trying to tap? Did you feel him trying to tap? See, when you're in when you're in the the, the fire, uh, you don't see it. You're, you're, you're too busy being in there. But as soon as I passed the, his arm across my hip, I knew it went. I knew all the ligaments had went. You could hear it. You could see it. And I, I let out a visual uh, mention to the referee, like, hey, his arm's, his arm's gone. His arm's gone. I can't remember exactly what I said. There was maybe a wee F in there as well. And I mean, the referee couldn't see it. And I'm not sure if he was trying to tap with his arm that was broke or it was just flat on my bow. I generally don't know. I don't know what that's like. uh, I know, like just touching the elephant trunk, obviously. Uh, <laughs> you know what a Saturday night gets interesting yeah. in Scotland. Uh, and but I had to rain down the elbows because the submission was never ever going to happen after that arm had went. Did you give him credit for being that tough to, to take the elbows after the arm break? Yeah, we don't see that a lot in MMA. Guys just taking it right to the wire. But I think after you have made... you. you you've built up this image of being a tough guy. You need to kind of go out in your shield, don't you? You don't have the, the choice of just saying, oh, I've had too much. And I take my hat off to him because that takes a lot of, that takes a lot of minerals to uh, do that. Two more quick for me. I don't know if you've seen the replay, if you were able to see the referee's position. Would it surprise you to know that he's a black belt referee? The referee's a black belt. Now, even, even that submission was tight and even the triangle, like he, I'm not here to, Slate the referee. He's very, very experienced in his job, and ultimately, it's his decision. But without putting a lot of pressure on the referee, it's my opponent's decision to stay in there, and my opponent decided to say, "No, no, no, my arm's absolutely fine." So it's uh, you can't blame this on the referee. Fair. Last thing before this fight, your opponent said that uh, one of the reasons he felt such animosity was you, like he had some messages from fans that were racial in nature. I think most of us would say you don't support that. I wanted to give you an opportunity to tell those people that. Knock that shit off. No, no, like this sport, it uh, doesn't matter what color you are, what sex you are, we all just get along, and that's the way it should be. And um, for people that are messaging that kind of shit, it's unbelievable, man. In this day and age, that this is actually happening. So sort your shit out, man. Over here. Uh, what's think? it feel like to snap a human being's arm <laughs> inside an octagon? <laughs> that's, a, that's a question I have. I've actually said to my coaches, what to do. I, was like, I didn't think that was possible. I generally didn't think. 
biomechanically the arm should do that. But hey, who am I? I have not got a degree in medicine ever. I just, I just turn up and be a tough guy. In your last fight, uh, Shogun tapped his strikes. This fight, you snapped your opponent's arm in half. Uh, do you think it's time to start putting your, your name on this list of most violent fighters in the UFC? Yeah, that sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Like, it's, it's not in my nature to be a violent guy. I do a job, and my job is entertaining, and that's what we get. If I'm not getting submissions, I'm getting crazy, broken elephant arms. Then, is any names you want for your next fight? There's a lot of uh, good light heavyweight fights coming up. Or is when do you want to get yeah, back in? There's the, the top ten's pretty stacked. We guys actually haven't already been matched up. You know, I'm looking for somebody in that top ten, nine, ten, somewhere in that, maybe seven, as far down as that. Um, but ultimately, it comes down to people have been watching that. There's light heavies watch, light heavyweights watching that. And if MDs out there thinks that they've got better jujitsu than myself, then come and prove it. Like I want to be the guy in the rankings who. Everybody feels. I want to be the Damien Maya in my division. I want to be that guy where it's like, oh, we don't go to the ground with Paul. We try and keep him standing up. We want to knock him out. Well, I know he has a fight lined up, but I think a lot of people point at Anthony Smith as having one of the better uh, submissions uh, skill sets in the octagon. Is that someone you'd, you'd have to fight at some point just to solidify that you are the best in this division? Yeah, I'd love to have that fight. And he's been very vocal. And he said after his uh, two fights, so he said he'd love to have that fight. UFC had. Uh, something else in mind for him. I think he's fighting Span at the moment, isn't he? Um, I was meant to fight Span last year before the pandemic hit. You know, I'm ready. Um, if there's somebody out there who wants to take this fight, then, then then ask the boss. But ultimately, I can wait. I can wait for the, the winner of this. I'm more than happy. How happy are you to get in there, especially when the way and you guys got in each other's faces? You know, he felt free to kind of jaw a little bit and say some things to you. At that moment, when it happens, how sad is it in your head that you want to make him have a little payback for what what happens up there on the stage you know that sounds really nasty like like i'm gonna out here and i'm like i want to kill like i'm not that's not in my nature my nature is to do a job the same as it is for yourselves to put out media that's your job my job is just happens to be in violence and uh it turns out i'm pretty good at it so there's no animosity in me when i stand in front of your opponent i'm fired up because that's my job and i should be fired up at that point um so no animosity in me and when it comes to the face-offs as for the fans, man, let's give them something. Here. Let's give them something. And and the, and the war paint, maybe that throws us off. We're, we're thinking you're coming there ready to kill somebody because you're coming there with a yeah. war paint. You know, when we put on that war paint, man, we go to war. And uh, I, I love it. It, it. It's patriotic. It makes me feel proud to be Scottish. And, it, and like they brought up earlier, definitely it seemed like he went to the back really, really quickly. Was there ever any point knowing that he was coming out here saying that his striking was going to, you know, be the, the 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 answer to to your striking or whatever? Was there ever any point that you wanted to maybe stand in there and see whose power was better, or did or was it tough to kind of just stick with the game plan, knowing that once you got him down, think, that could end? It? Yeah, I think you need to separate your ego from your ability. Like your ego will always tell you to do the thing that people say is wrong. And for a long time, I had to convince myself that I'm I'm going to be a striker. I'm going to be a striker. If it's not in your nature, it's not in your nature. If you can't be ultimately a fighter, then you can't train that. You're either born with the intent to be a fighter or not. And it's the same for jiu-jitsu for me. I can't be a striker because I'm too good at jiu-jitsu. If my jiu-jitsu wasn't as good or was weak, I need to then rely on my striking. But my striking is, I believe my striking is very, very good. I'm long, I'm rangy, I'm powerful. Ask MD in the back when they hear me hit pads. Like, the, the the shockwave is, is heard around the, the 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 locker room. And last one for me, and I'm not sure if this was a current video or an older video. I thought I saw something on TV that showed you rolling with John Good and and you were showing some moves. Is that the move that you rolled into the bit that eventually got the arm tonight? Do you remember? So that move is a it's the back take. So from back mount you take a triangle. Uh, triangle is one of these moves. It's just my move. Um, and ultimately, that's what I finished with. The triangle was locked up, it was tight, but it was never ever going to get finished because the arm was just gone. But uh, yeah, to ask you a question, <laughs> apologies, like, are we over here to come back here? Yeah, uh, it was very, very similar, but the back take wasn't there. It was a uh, mounted triangle that I was going for and mounted amber. It was spectacular. Thanks well done. So Before the fight, oh, sorry. Who we got? Can I see? Oh, Where? Oh, no, go ahead. Oh. Before the fight, you nearly, nearly the whole audience is booing you. How does it feel when the fight was over to win over the crowd? You know, it fires you, man. It's uh, it, it does fire you up because 
<clears throat> too much love over you, you, you play up to it, but being the bad guy is good, man. Everybody loves a bad guy, even when we watch Star Wars. So you're into pro wrestling, so you know you know about that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, come on. So uh, yeah, it fires us up, and I've got I've got a teammate Chris Pongard who who shows me the moves to be the bad guy. <laughs> Dumb as a rock. <laughs> I, I just had a quick question. Did you know that you were a plus two twenty five underdog? Uh, and how do you feel about that? If you did or didn't know? So I didn't know that, but it's, it was obviously going to be that way. You know, nobody ever rates the gatekeeper. I'm the guy that stands outside the nightclub. You know, and he's like, no shoes, no shirt. You're not getting in. Regulars only. I'm that guy. I hope tonight that I've changed from being the the gatekeeper, the bouncer. To then moving on to be maybe the contender, the top ten guy, the jujitsu guy. Also, you know, I feel really bad to see the people that have put on bets. Paul Craig, first round submission, Paul Craig, submission. They're not going to get their money because it's went down as a TKO. Like I, I feel really bad about that. And I, I apologize to everybody out there who's not wasted money, but placed a bet on me, man. I apologize. Uh, well, congratulations. I, one other thing I would ask you is, um, I think you had said at one point you kind of had to come and mature in the UFC that you didn't, you know, have a lot of experience before you got here. And so is it kind of safe to say that you feel like you're kind of hitting your stride now, even though you're several fights in? Yep. You know, I said to you before, uh, Callum, it was, uh, I was too early to the sport. I was far too early. I started this sport when I was in my mid-20s. It got to the UFC by the time I was 30. Too soon for me. I didn't have enough ring time. I won all my fights by first round submission. Had never faced any animosity in the octagon, and that that, that showed in my uh, my first four fights in the UFC. I was green, and uh, ultimately, I had to go back and learn my craft and learn my craft in the octagon. You don't get a chance to learn your craft out it when you're a UFC fighter. And when you go to any other gym other than your own gym, you're fighting. Everybody's coming for the guy who's in the UFC and the guy who's not the best in the UFC. And I, I believe I've changed that, that sort of not the best. I believe I'm in the mix and I believe that people are scared of my skill set and I hope people are scared of my skill set because if they're not, it's going to be a bad night for them and we've seen that tonight. Thanks. Congrats. KB. Yeah. We hitting some whiskey up tonight? Um, perhaps, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and we are. Dumb as a rock, Chris Bunga. <laughs> oh my god.